Hello and welcome to Glenn's Small Engine. Uh, this uh, Briggs and Stratton 5000 watt generator here. Here won't start on its own. We have to prime the carburetor with a little fuel. Uh, as soon as that prime is gone, the engine dies. Uh, we've already got fresh fuel in the fuel tank. Uh, we've already made sure we got plenty of fuel going to our carburetor. We pulled the line off down here. It's got a good flow of fuel. Down to the carburetor, we're going to go ahead and pull the carburetor off and clean it out. We're just going to lay this air filter cover back up here out of the way. It's got that other hose running to it. Pull this carburetor out a little bit. Push the throttle back to the idle position. This rod will just come straight up out of there like that. Then you got a little spring. Okay, we got the carburetor off. I'm going to wash this up real good before we start tearing it down. Uh, we don't want to make it any worse than it is. And uh, uh, we'll see if we can clean it out real good. Okay, we got the carburetor here on the workbench. Uh, I washed it off. I'm going to go ahead and take this bowl off. I've kind of got some gummed up stuff there in the bottom of the bowl. We'll get all that cleaned out. The float and the needle looks pretty good. Your main uh, high speed jet is right here in the bottom of this carburetor. Uh, this one is completely stopped up. Over here on the side, you have your low speed jet right here, your low speed circuit. Both of these jets have to be unstopped for this thing to run right. If this low speed jet is stopped up and the high speed jet is open, it'll still start and run, but it'll usually surge and lope. Uh, it's got to be getting fuel from both of those jets in order to work correctly. Back this idle speed screw out so we can get the low speed jet out. Got this little piece right on top of the jet here has to come off. Just want to be kind of gentle when you're taking this jet out. It's plastic. But you can see right in the bottom of that, right here in the bottom of this low speed jet, there's a little bitty orifice, a little bitty hole right here in the bottom that's got to be open. You can take a little small tiny piece of wire or something and open that hole up. You can take a little piece of wire like this and just open that hole up. What we're doing is we're just cleaning all the varnish and build up off of that little brass jet and that'll get the low speed side open. We'll blow that out in just a second. You can clean this high speed jet with a piece of wire or a little micro uh, drill bit. Just something to reach in there and gently clean that jet. I've seen people use, you can use like a torch tip cleaner. Just something that gently goes down in that hole to clean that high speed jet out. But when they're really bad, it's good to take them out. Okay, here's your main high speed jet right here. And you can see that, that hole there right in the center of it. It's completely stopped up. So I'll get a little piece of wire or something and clean that hole out. I found a little bitty tiny micro drill bit. I'm just going to use it to gently clean that hole out. Uh, you do not want to make this hole any larger. Uh, you'll ruin the carburetor if you start changing the size of these jets. So what we're going to do is just gently clean out that hole right there. And then we'll spray some cleaner down through it. But I don't know if you can... See that we have a little light coming through that hole now, so that jet is opening up. Spray some mild carburetor cleaner through these holes on this carburetor. Uh, try to make sure everything's open. And uh, we'll use some of that same stuff to try to clean this bowl out with. Okay, we got our carburetor cleaned up. We got our bowl clean. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and start putting it back together. This, this little tube fell out the bottom of the carburetor. Uh, I believe they call it emulsion tube. Some of these air bleeds on the front will mix air with the fuel before it goes up through the throat of the carburetor. If yours falls out, the, the long end goes in first. 
and it sticks up through the center of the carburetor just a little bit there. We'll go ahead and put our high speed jet back in the bottom of it. All right, we got our new bowl gasket on there. We'll drop our float and needle in. I use a little pressure tester to check this needle and seat and make sure it's holding. You can see it's holding real good there. That's good, plenty good enough to keep the carburetor from flooding. We'll go ahead and set our bowl back on. Well, this is a 10 millimeter. We got our new O-ring. This little black jet has a little O-ring at the bottom of it that we've replaced. We've installed a new one on there. This low speed jet, you can just walk it back down in there. This other little piece lays on top that holds it in place. Then our idle speed screw holds it all together. I run it in until it just bumps the throttle stop there. Then I'll go three turns, three full turns. All right, so this carburetor is ready to go back on now. So we'll put it back on there and see what happens. We got our carburetor all cleaned up. Uh, so we're gonna start putting it back on now. I just slide it up on like that. Uh, hold the throttle back to the idle position. Just hold your throttle over to the idle position and this rod will just fall down in the hole it goes in. Uh, then hook the little bitty spring up. Go ahead and hook our fuel line up. I'm going to go ahead and turn my fuel valve on now. That way I can, if I've got any leaks or anything, I can go ahead and fix them now. Air filter. Oh, that. Yeah. and get this air filter cover back on. Double check so I don't see any leaks. I always like to run my hand under it to see if I see any leaks or anything. Don't want to crank it up if we got a fuel leak. I've got a grinder here that I can test it with whenever we crank it. Got the choke on. starts right up on the first pull. Uh, the grinder test works, putting out juice there.